What's up, Raider Nation? It's your boy, Mikey Raider, coming to you with my day two recap. I was able to go live stream on my channel and react proportionately in that video. You guys can check that video in my live section. But for now, let's talk about day two and who the Raiders drafted at what position. And let's see if we can explain and understand what they did in day one a little bit more clearly. Hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Consider donating. There are donation portals down below or becoming a member of this channel. If you appreciate me, enjoy my content, and if I have earned any of your support. Sorry about my voice, guys. It's been a really long day for me with other regions. Uh, but that being said, I'm going to give you guys the best breakdown from my Raider fan perspective of day two. But quickly, let me walk and give you guys a little bit better visual. Maybe you guys can see the whole room, and I'm sure you can still hear me. But uh, a lot of people were perplexed yesterday. We don't need to go over the Brock Bowers pick anymore. But a few things I did not mention in yesterday's recap of Brock Bowers is, is that he's a versatile tight end. He can play wide receiver. He has also played halfback, and he is becoming a good blocker. So if you think about it, the pick, we actually fit some of our needs. People were saying we didn't have a tight end need of Brock Bowers because we got Michael Mayers. I forgot to mention that Michael Mayers was injured at the end of last season. But according to Tom Telesco at the post-game press conference, that injury was not an issue in why they drafted Brock Bowers. He was the best player available at a position that they thought they had a need at. But Michael Mayers was injured last season a little bit. And then also Brock Bowers has an injury and he didn't play in a bowl game due to an injury. So... We have two tight ends basically coming off injuries, but I don't think they were that significant. But we got two tight ends, and they're both versatile. Brock Bowers can line up as a wide receiver on occasion. Same thing Michael Mayers has done as well with the Raiders. Brock Bowers can block. Same thing with Michael Mayers. So they add an offensive lineman to block when need be, Either one of them. So that's like adding an offensive lineman. Then on top of that, Brock Bowers is like a number one rated tight end. Comparisons are George Kittle, Sam Laporta, and some say Travis Kelsey. With better, you know, with better skills. And Brock Bowers has also played halfback. That's right. He took halfback runs. So he's a weapon and you get yourself a weapon, regardless of the need. So, with all quarterbacks possibly being gone, the pick of Brock Bowers is still an A-plus to me, and we're going to leave it at that. So that led us into day two today. We still have a lot of needs. People want quarterback. People want offensive tackle. People want edge rusher. People want cornerback. Some might even say running back or wide receivers. Well, in the second round today, there was a run on defensive players. Why did that happen? Because in the first round, teams were going offensive crazy. I think something like 21 or 20 out of the first round draft picks were all offensive players. So that proved that the second round, that's why everybody went on a defensive run. Then when the Raiders picked about 12 or 13 picks after the round started at 44, people are like, oh, my God, quarterbacks, defensive tackles, defensive edge rushers are, are being taken off the board. We got to get one. No. No. Think about it from a draft strategy standpoint. When everybody is running left, you don't want to be a part of that crowd. You go right. 
when all the teams are making a run on defensive players, we need, that's the time to strike. That's like Wall Street. You buy when the stock is low, and when everybody else is buying other stocks, you buy the other stocks. So that is my opinion why the Raiders went offensive um, center or slash guard. And I'm going to butcher his name, JPJ, Jackson Powers Johnson, or Johnson Powers Jackson. I forget the school he came out of. Believe me, I've had a long day. But that being said, that pick, they, they labeled him with Jim Plunkett announcing, they labeled him as a center. And he has had center experience. But they showed highlights of him playing at guard. So I got a little confused. Is he a center? Is he a guard? Maybe he's both. So now think about that from a standpoint of draft strategy. Our offense sucked a lot last year. And we got a new offense this year. And our defense was the best part of our team. So that's another reason why we did not need in the second round to draft defense. Because we're building our offense from the trenches. And apparently he was the third center guard or player on the board when we picked at 44. That is basically BPA again for the second time. That fits a position of need, or does it? People didn't think we needed a center. Some people didn't think we needed a guard. Most people, or some Raider Nation, thought we needed a right tackle more than any of them. But again, we drafted a center slash guard that can back up Andre James because he has played center, so he'll probably take that backup role. He'll compete for the starting right guard spot where Jermaine Illuminor left, I believe that was his name, or maybe he was right tackle. Forgive me. But he might be the starting right guard. And, of course, that still leaves us with a right tackle need. Maybe this guy is versatile enough and he'll try his hand at right tackle as well as guard and being a backup center. So that's versatility in Jackson Powers Johnson or JPJ. That's versatility. Now, let me throw this into effect on our offense. We got Gardner Minshew. Minshew mania. We got Brock Bowers. My namesake, my last name. And now we got Powers on the offensive line blocking for Bowers. So we got Minshew Mania throwing to Bauer Power or to Power Bauer. You see how that works? Powers Bauer. So we're going to have Minshew Mania and Bauer Power on this team. I grade the second round pick of Johnson Powers Johnson an A. I'm not going to give it an A plus, but I'm going to give it an A. I gave the A plus to Brock Bowers because I completely understand that pick. Now, even looking back, I understand it even more. And hopefully that hits a lot of Raider Nation because a lot of Raider Nation was upset. I grade the second day pick or the second round pick of Johnson Powers Johnson, the center slash guard. He's a versatile player. He's a big boy. He can get it done out of a big school. I believe it was I'm forgetting it might. I graded an A. Now that leads us into round three. Well, there was runs on linebackers and cornerbacks from round two to round three. Now let me move closer so we can just change it all up because it, it gets redundant. Now there was one on running back. I'm sorry, running backs on cornerbacks and defensive players like tackles and edge rushers. Then the Raiders picked at 77. And who did the Raiders go with? 
everybody was still going defense. Everybody was still going defense for the most part in that um, between the second and third round. And yes, we have Nietzsche. The Raiders went another offensive play. Wow, a running back just went to Green Bay, Marshawn Lloyd, to back up Josh Jacobs. Um, so the Raiders pick at 77. Damari Glaze, I believe his name is. He's a big boy, like six. Five, 320 something pounds. Um, and he's a tackle. He's a purebred right tackle. Um, again, Mel Kuyper had him going in the fourth or fifth round, but we all know what they say. Who in the hell is Mel Kuyper? Who in the hell is Mel Kuyper? I have more credentials than Mel Kuyper, and my dog doesn't even play football. Who in the hell is Mel? I forgot how it goes. Um, so we picked up Glaze at right tackle or offensive tackle. He has played games at left tackle. He has. They announced that, and they showed his highlights. They called him a project, but still, he's played most of his career at right tackle. But he's also played left tackle. So think about that type of versatility. We got ourselves a guard slash center with versatility in JPJ. We got Colton Miller at the left tackle, which he'll probably take that up. But if, for any good forsaken reason, he gets injured, we got the Glaze character that could maybe try his hand at left tackle. Or Colton Miller can move to right tackle if need be, because he has played right tackle as well. Maybe Glaze tries out left tackle at camp, and they can figure it all out. Versatile versatile player that actually fits a need. Now, that being said, he was not the BPA at that 77th pick in the third round. He was not the BPA, according to a lot of people. So the Raiders finally went with a need at that position. But they're solidifying the O-line because we all know that it sucked last year under Aiden O'Connell and, and whatever players were in there. It sucked. Josh Jacobs struggled. It sucked. They are building the offense in these early rounds. And I like it. I give the third round pick of Damari Glaze. I'm going to give that one a B minus because technically – I'll listen to a little bit of what Mel Kuyper has to say. But I understand it. It fits a need. And I'm loving our offense right now. Now, that brings us into day four. Let's talk a little bit about tomorrow's draft picks and what they could be or they shouldn't be for the Raiders. Well, going along with this draft strategy, many of us still want them to get a quarterback. Many of us still want them to get a quarterback, and we have a lot of needs. Running back, possibly a wide receiver, um, a quarterback, uh, an edge rusher possibly, a linebacker, which a lot of them went early on in the draft, and cornerback. Um, and real quickly, I just wanted to mention there was a cornerback drafted named Kool-Aid that was drafted earlier in the second round. Um, kind of want Kool-Aid on the Raiders. I wish Kool-Aid was on the Raiders so we could have a Raider named Kool-Aid. That would have been really cool. You know, so we, we would have um, Jack Jones. I call him Jack in the Box. You know, once you get in his box, it's going to be disgusting. You get it? Jack in the Box. <laughs> and then we would have had Kool-Aid maybe at the other side at cornerback. And then they would say, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Or... You drink the Kool-Aid if, if they got intercepted or tackled or, you know, blocked pass. You drink the Kool-Aid, you know. <laughs> I, don't know. I just thought that would have been really cool. All right, so now looking forward to the fourth round. I predict there's going to be a run on backup quarterbacks in the fourth round early. If not to finish out, you know, um, this, what is it, the third round. Um, 
Raiders have a couple of quarterbacks that I've read through articles on their radar. On their radar, they have Spencer Rattler and Travis Davies on their radar that they had visits with and they had time with. Now, you're not going to get a starting quarterback in the fourth round unless they're Tom Brady somehow and they start later in the year. Technically, you're not going to get a starting quarterback in the fourth or fifth round. But I believe there's going to be a run on quarterbacks, and we still need a quarterback to appease the fans and to at least have a quarterback that's young in case Gardner Minshew gets injured, Aiden O'Connell doesn't even progress anymore. We're going to have possibly a third, I mean, a fourth round quarterback that's a project that in maybe two or three years would lead the team into the future. That would be an amazing quarterback room. So there's going to be a run on quarterbacks. And if the Raiders believe in the theory that I just told you about backing up their running back room in the fourth round, they need to go out and get a running back, but they need to trade up. I don't think the Raiders picked to 121. And by that time, Spencer Rattler or Jordan Tavies or whatever his name is, is going to be gone by 121. The Raiders are going to, if they want a quarterback, if they want specifically one of those two quarterbacks, they are going to have to move up in the draft and get that quarterback. He's not going to be the starter, but it would be a good quarterback to have to back up Gardner Minshew for the next year or two, and we see what happens. And that would be a good pick, in my opinion. That would please the fans. It'd get us a top, semi-top flight quarterback, and we can move on from there. So, in my opinion, they're going to need to trade up from 121 probably to like 101 or 102 or 105 or somewhere in between there to pick up one of these quarterbacks. N none of the two quarterbacks that I mentioned will fall to the Raiders at 121 or 127, whatever the number is. They will not fall. So if the quarter if quarterback is a necessity, which I believe it is, because I saw Mark Davis pissed off, you know, after that third round pick. I saw they were pissed off yesterday. Antonio Pierce and Mark Davis looked pissed off yesterday. Um, and I said this in my live stream. What were they pissed off about? Because Mark Davis and Antonio Pierce were in the side of the room after the Brock Bowers pick. And they were just like looking at each other like this. And then Tom Telesco was in the middle of the tables clapping. Well, here's what I think happened. I think when the Atlanta Falcons picked at number eight and they took Michael Penix, <laughs> Antonio Pierce, and Mark Davis, he wanted a star name for the quarterback position. He wanted a star name to celebrate and support with Raider Nation, you know, plus fitting a need. But when Michael Penix was taken at eight, I think Antonio Pierce and Mark Davis, they got so shocked and then the draft started to continue. And they're just like this. What do we do now? And then Tom Telesco's like, guys, we have to move on. We have to draft. You guys can sit there in shock. But I'm going on with our draft board. You know, you. So even when the pick came up, Tom, Tom Telesco probably had to convince them we need to take Brock Bowers. And they probably said, but we got Michael Myers and, and all that. Maybe we can go defense. And then Tom Telesco's like, no. Best player available. He's a weapon. He could be a receiver, a halfback. He could be an offensive line blocker. We're going with Brock Bowers. And then they're like, okay. So then he selected him, and they're still in shock. They're like, what happened? We lost Michael Penix. We lost Jane Daniels. Now we have to draft a second tight end for two years in a row in, early in the draft. That's what I think happened. But in the second round of today, Antonio Pierce and Mark Davis, after the selection of JPJ, they were excited. They were cheering. I think they got notes from the PR department to look happier. So they were doing that for the second round pick. But then when the third round pick came with Glaze and they went another offensive lineman, 
Antonio Pierce was fish bumping people. Tom Telesco was there fish bumping and clapping or whatever as well. But I saw Mark Davis alone on a chair. I think he had his feet, his hands crossed and he's like, maybe he's tired. Maybe he's upset he wanted Spencer Rattler. <laughs> maybe he wanted a quarterback in that third round. And I don't know. I do believe Mark Davis wants a quarterback to appease the fans, to have some like a young rookie quarterback to sell for the future. Um, because a lot of the fans are like, Gardner Minshew is not a, a starting quarterback or whatever. So, but again, in the fourth round, I believe the Raiders are going to get a quarterback. I believe they're going to trade up and they're going to select Spencer Rattler or Travis Davies. And hopefully they don't get sniped by another team where it could happen. But that's what I believe the Raiders are going to do in the fourth round. But if those players are gone and they don't trade up, when the Raiders pick at 121, they have to continue the best strategy of best player available that possibly fits a need as well. I mean, you can't technically go tight end again. You know what I'm trying to say? If there's a best player available tight end, you, you can't do it. You got to pick the best player availability, whether it be wide receiver, running back, cornerback, defensive edge rusher, whatever, if no quarterback falls in the fourth round. It's going to be an interesting day three. Um, but I'm loving this draft so far, guys. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit clear-minded and I have a lot more faith ever since we got rid of Josh McDaniels. But And we got our Raiders swag back a little bit, you know, with the players. So I just feel more positive about this year's draft. It doesn't feel like a Raider decision. You know what I mean? It feels like good decisions. Doesn't mean they're all going to work out. They're all going to be starters. And we don't understand every pick. But the more we think about it from a general manager perspective, I think most of Raider Nation is going, you know what? Yeah, this is not a traditional Raider draft by any means, you know, of the Al Davis errors or whatever, where the flashy player constantly. It's a new draft, and we're a new Raider team. That being said, I might try to go live tomorrow on day three, but I've been dealing with some health stuff all day today. It's been a really long day. So I just want to thank you guys. Let me know your thoughts on what the Raiders are going to do tomorrow. Do they draft a quarterback in the fourth round, or do they draft one way later? And if they draft a quarterback, who do you want them to draft? And let me know who you want them to draft as a running back or a wide receiver or anybody, and in what round. You got to also remember, we're probably going to bring on 10 or 12 undrafted free agents, and hopefully out of the 10 or 12, two or three of them make the team, and maybe one of them will become a starter. So we're okay. We're doing good, and I like how the draft is panned out. And I'm going to title this video something like, the Raiders win the, the draft, or the Raiders win the offensive draft. I don't know. Let me know your th guys' thoughts. I appreciate you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay Raider, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless. Go Raiders!